Hey, I recently saw a video where uh, Bob Blanford, uh, RJB Woodturner, as he's known on YouTube and Instagram, he made a video using uh, Spectraply. This stuff right here, multiple layers of colored wood glued together. And he took them and sliced them up and then glued the slices back together in a spiral. And I thought that was really cool looking. One of the things about Spectraply is, you know, you got the stripes from this side, on this side, not so much. So when it's round, it gives it a, a, a different look. Um, I'll show you. So here's what something would look like when it's round. So it kind of gives it that wood grain look because it's got the flats here and the stripes here. But that got me thinking, is there a way to make it where all the sides look like this? Not like this. I thought that would make it look really cool, especially once you make it into a spiral. So I'm going to try to kind of turn this into a segmented blank. This is a pretty big blank for what I want to do, so I, but I know I'm going to lose a lot to the curve of the blade and things like that. So it'll probably be smaller once it's all glued up. But let's let's just see what happens. Okay, so now I have four pieces, like so. Two of them have the grain going this way, and two of them have the grain going this way. I want these two. So these two are no good for this particular experiment. So, I need to split these in half, so I'll have four pieces going this direction. Okay, so now I've got four pieces all going the same direction. One's longer than the other because I can't measure, but that doesn't matter. We'll cut them all to length in a minute. So, they're all going the same direction now. I'm going to give them a little, a little sanding on the saw, side that I saw it on. My four pieces weren't lining up the way I wanted them to because two of them were a little bit bigger because I wasn't going straight down the middle whenever I cut the 45. So I cut two little thin strips off. So now all four of them line up perfectly to make a, uh, a pattern, as you can see here. So the next question is, how do I glue this together? So as you can see from my shirt, it's the next day. Uh, so I've got it all glued up. And you can see the end here. It kind of makes this nice chevron. Everything matches up. The uh, the other four pieces, I glued those up. Um, but the glue up on that was kind of a failure. It's a big gap right here all the way down it. So I didn't glue that one up correctly. That was my own fault. That would have made a cool blank. Oh well. Maybe I'll turn it and see what happens. <clears throat> so this one I want to uh, clean it up, clean the glue off, and get it uh, squared up so I can start slicing it. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to cut these into quarter inch slices. And so that I know that I've got them in the right order, I'm just going to do a squiggly line going down one side. I've made a quick little um, cross cut sled here and I've taken a rule and drawn out a ruler on here so I can just move this to the quarter inch line make a cut. 
it would probably also be smart if I made a stop block. So I can just take this clamp here, get my block where I want it. I want to make sure my clamp's not in the way. It is, so let's move this up a little bit. So now I can just cut my slices pretty quick. After I cut that first slice, I realized that I need a way to keep these all together when I'm gluing it back up. And a way that I like to do it is to run a bolt through the middle. So what I actually need to do first is drill a hole from end to end going through the center of this. I'm going to do that with a quarter inch bit. And we'll see if I can drill it straight. All right, I've got this in the chuck. When I put it in the chuck, I used a live center to make sure that this was in line with this so that it would spin, so it would spin even, so it's centered. I'm going to start the hole with the Forstner bit. It's a little fatter and a little sturdier. Get it started so I'm going straight, and then I'll use my long quarter inch bit to drill the rest of the way through. Alright, that's as far as I can get with that bit. Let's see if that hole was in the middle on the other side. Pretty close. Closer than I expected. <laughs> I think that'll work. The slower I cut, the smoother the cuts are, and the less I have to sand, because I don't want to really want to sand a whole lot. So you can see on this cut, I went too fast, blade wobbled, and it made these little ugly spots. Going slow, going fast. So I'm going to go slow from now on. Get every bit I can out of this. So I'm gonna try to clamp this where I won't cut my clamp in half. It's gonna be close though. So I've got all my pieces sliced up with one hole going straight down the middle. <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to glue them back up in a spiral. So I've got this long quarter inch bolt here. Um, I don't know where you can find a bolt like this that has this much without threads. I got this from a trophy shop. It was holding a trophy together. So if you use one with threads you're gonna get glue in your threads. It's gonna be really hard to pull it back out. Just so you know. So my bolt is entirely too long for my blank. So I've got this just random drilled out pen blank that I'm going to use as a spacer so that I can put my bolt on the end here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing these up.
and I will just wait for that to dry. So, as you can undoubtedly tell by my shirt, it is yet again the next day. Does this project take three days? No, but I work a lot. It's also been cold in my shop, so it makes the glue set a little slower. All right, so let's get the bolt out of here. We'll see how easy it is to pull out. Well, it moves pretty freely in the part where there's no threads. But getting it out through the getting the threads out is the difficult part. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this bolt back on, put the nut back on. So I've got something to pull against. So now that I got this out, I've got a couple options for how I can turn it. I can put it on a pin mandrel because the pin mandrel is also a quarter inch. I think I'll put it on there real quick and we'll get, I'm just gonna get it round. Cause I honestly, I don't know what I wanna make out of it yet. So let's at least make it round, see what it looks like. It wasn't off by much, but it was off a little bit. And then I'm going to use some, some spacers from just a, any old pen kit. Looks like it's like Mardi Gras in here. So there's what it looks like if you segment your blank to where it's all the end pieces of the spectra ply. So it's really kind of crazy looking. I feel like this will give you a headache after a while. And I know you're all wondering what the other half looked like. And from the end, they look like a bunch of boxes. Now this one I messed up and there's a big void there. I didn't glue it up as carefully as I did this one. And I wish I had, because it looks pretty cool too. It's got, it looks almost more like wood grain than, than the Spectra Ply does when it's whole. So yeah, these are both gonna be really cool, whatever I make them into. So this one has the hole down the middle where I glued up the spiral. This one doesn't. I just glued it up and just wrap tape around it. Maybe I'll make some screwdriver handles out of these or something. I don't know. We'll see. That's not part of this video. That's the next video. So, hey, thank you for watching. How to uh, segment spectra ply blanks. If you want to help me to make more cool videos like this, this stuff's not, not, not cheap. So if you go over to Patreon and sign up for like a dollar a month, you know, throw a buck my way, help me buy glue and blanks and stuff, then I can make more videos. So yeah, thank you for watching. Check me out on Instagram, Joe Pierce Maker. Uh, you get to see stuff like this before I post it on YouTube. And um, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate it. Have a great day.